Hi. <clears throat> Hi, friends friends and family and community. I'm so glad that you're joining me. I just wanted to take a little bit of time to uh, share the state of partners in learning and let you know where we're at and how we're doing and um, just give you a little bit of an update and some information. So we're doing okay right now at partners in learning. And um, this pandemic, as you know, it's brought about lots of challenges but it's also brought about lots of opportunities and we're really thankful for those and we're thankful for the lessons that we've learned throughout all of the challenges so i'll just start by sharing with you what's been going on um it from the very beginning when uh the pandemic actually got started and uh we started con being concerned about financially would partners in learning be able to withstand this storm so we tried to be very proactive with that and in an effort to make sure that partners in learning stayed viable even after the pandemic was over we began furloughing our staff as of march the 15th so we have quite a few staff that's been out for a while now and have already begun to draw their unemployment and we've uh, our finance director has been instrumental dan henderson in helping them to be able to receive their unemployment um, it's not been without the challenges but for the most part all of them have finally started receiving it as of april the 9th uh which was actually the thursday before easter we decided to close down our novant site due to the ongoing drop in enrollment and the cost of overhead because like i said at the beginning we want to make sure that partners in learning is viable and able to continue after this virus has ended and it will end and things will go back to a new normal and when it does we will be be continue to be a vital part of the community and so we closed on april the 9th and the reason we closed was normally between the two sites we run about 260 children each day well we had dwindled <clears throat> down to where now <coughs> excuse me with just partners in learning at catawba open we run between 60 and 70 children each day and that is strictly for essential employees because our staff are essential to providing care for the essential employees in our community so we run about 60 or seven children 70 children each day which is an overall overall loss about of about 180 children between both sides each day that's a lot of children that are now at home with their families and that's a lot of revenue loss for partners in learning as you can imagine i have allergies so you have to forgive my voice as of last friday we have furloughed 33 of our full-time staff members thanks to being able to acquire a uh, payroll protection loan we that we actually received yesterday yes good news thank goodness for the stimulus package we have brought back 13 staff members and are in the process of looking at ways to bring back more obviously we did not want to bring them back on site because we didn't want to put those staff members at risk or the children that were serving at risk so what we did was, and this is another opportunity, we are using those staff members to be able to provide educational services or remote learning opportunities for the children that are at home. And yes, you can provide um, remote learning opportunities, even for infants and toddlers. And, you know, it's through the parents, but um, that's great. And uh, also for our all the way from pre-K or kindergarten, all the way down through our infants' rooms, and actually some of our school agers as well, 
or receiving those remote learning opportunities. Also, many of these families, those 180 children that are staying at home, you can imagine the isolation that their families are feeling and that the children, what happened to getting to go to school? What happened to my teachers? What happened to my friends? Now they'll be able to <clears throat> be reached out to and we'll be able to provide some social services. Um, our social worker, we had had to cut her to half time and now we've been able to, thanks to that loan, bring her back on full time so that she will be able to assist our teachers in making sure we're able to meet those needs. And then of course, the, um, we have our frontline uh, staff members, our frontline teachers. I actually call them our superheroes in this situation. They put their self in danger's way every day, just as nurses and doctors and uh, fast food workers and emergency workers and all of those do every day. And <clears throat> they deserved some hazard pay. So now thanks to that loan, they're able to get some hazard pay uh, for working on those front lines. The staff uh, also are provide, they're providing the family support, they're providing the um, in-home support, and our staff that we've been able to bring back on board that are at home, we're also able to provide some much needed staff development. So when they come back into the classroom, they are going to be remotivated because, you know, caregiver fatigue, it's a real thing. And they're just going to be a little bit smarter and know a little bit more because they're going to be spending a lot of hours receiving staff development. And one of our staff members is leading that up and helping them with their personal staff development plans to be able to achieve those. So that's been very exciting. And our staff, I'm watching them on Facebook list how excited they were to get to spend the day researching new ideas and learning about remote, learn, remote teaching. Another opportunity and challenge, and I'll start with the challenge, is that uh, we provide developmental therapy for about 150 children each week in their homes. Well, they closed that down, as you can imagine, real quick. And so all of those staff members, which is 16, had to be furloughed from that position. Then we did get approval through the North Carolina Early Intervention Program that we could begin doing it remotely. So that opportunity has been provided by our therapists to all of our families. Unfortunately, due to many reasons and technology being one of those, because you have to have access to that. And 90% of those families are low income. Only about 20% agreed to having the remote therapy or um, teletherapy is what they're calling it. So you, that's a huge, huge loss of revenue for partners in learning. And we count on that revenue to be able to pay our teachers a good salary. And so that's been quite a challenge, but our payload, payroll protection loan is going to help us with that challenge over the next eight weeks. It's also a challenge for those families of children with special needs because where they had someone coming into their home each week, now they're isolated even more. And research has shown that uh, families of children with special needs definitely experience a lot of isolation. The pandemic has also demonstrated the, fa the strong foundation that Partners in Learning has built over the last 24 years. Our staff, I can't say enough about them. They have pulled together. It's such a, an amazing team. Um, even those that are furloughed, they're like, we're feeling disconnected. And one of them began a Facebook, a private Facebook page so that they can meet together and share experiences and challenges. There's been nothing but love, um, compassion, and just a genuine care about others. Our board of directors, I cannot share how engaged they have been. 
we've been meeting virtually. We've met virtually uh, twice now since this has occurred and we're meeting again tomorrow. They have been dedicated to making sure that all of the resources that we needed, that um, our teachers are taken care of, that we were able to get this loan. They supported it. They want to make sure that we're being able to provide that high quality care that our community has always counted on. Another opportunity has been that we've been able to, uh, we've recognized from the beginning, but now our community is recognizing that families really rely on the early education system in order to keep working. So if we closed our doors, where would our essential families send their children? Childcare teachers are the workforce behind the workforce. We've known that, and now our community is recognizing that. The COVID-19 crisis underscores just how essential our childcare staff are and how essential it is to the state and Rowan County's overall uh, care for the emergency responders and other essential workers to be able to keep our community safe. Without us, they wouldn't be there, wouldn't be able to. While our child care staff are caring for their children, often at their own risk of their own health and safety. Even before COVID-19 hit, many North Carolina communities, including Rowan County, faced a significant child care shortage. Did you know that Partners in Learning, I, I shared the figures of 260 children each day, but we had 119 children, I'm sorry, 144 children on our waiting list each day. And of those 144 children, we had about 70 some were infants and toddlers. And Rowan County, every child care center had a wait list for infants and toddlers. So it's been a crisis. This has just made that crisis even wor worse and puts us at danger of not being able to reopen the doors of these child care centers and making the situation even worse. And so I was looking up some figures I wanted to give you. These figures that I'm going to give you is through the North Carolina Early Education Coalition, which I'm actually a member of. And of the latest figures dated April the 14th of this month for North Carolina shows in the blue. Actually, I'm just going to show it to you because you can look it up. And if you look at the blue in North Carolina, it is between 50 and 74 percent. Uh, I'm sorry, in Rowan County, 50 and 74 percent of our child care centers have closed. 50 and 74 percent. Novant is one of those. So when there is talk of reopening our communities, we need to think about who is going to keep the children for those parents to work. Are our child care centers going to be financially viable enough? So you may be asking, well, what can we do? Why are you telling us this? Well, what we can do is we can make sure <clears throat> that we make, that we voice, we give a voice for these childcare centers and these children, that we share that they are essential to our economy and that we make sure that the childcare industry has significant investments. That includes grants and loans so that we can ensure that there are places for these children to go when these people are able to go back to work, these parents are able to go back to work. And the bottom line is we have to invest in childcare. We've always had to, but now more than ever, we've known the research has shown the importance of early childhood education. But let's talk about the childcare part, the piece that we have to have for our workers to be able to return to work. So we've put a lot of things in place at Partners in Learning. We continue to put things in place and look at our financial stability. 
I ask that you continue to keep us in your thoughts, that you advocate for Partners in Learning. You're welcome to make a donation. That absolutely will help us to be able to weather this storm. I'm very optimistic. I'm optimistic about the future. We've learned lessons through this journey and we've learned just how much we all depend on each other. I've seen firsthand every day the su superheroes walk through the doors of Partners in Learning. Partners in Learning is a strong organization thanks to each of you. And with your wonderful support, there is no doubt that we will return to the new normal. We will reopen the doors of our Novant site. We will build our new and stronger, our new and healthier and stronger Partners in Learning facility. And we will be stronger than ever. So save the face, spread the word. We are the essential workers behind the essential workers. And I'll give you an update again, uh, maybe next week. I'll see you back and tell you just how Partners in Learning is doing. Thanks for your continued thoughts and prayers. They are always appreciated. Thank you.